So today I'm going to be taking a quick first look at the recent release of Netrunner. What is Netrunner? Netrunner is a Debian based distribution. It's based on Debian 12. It's based on the latest Debian stable. They use the KDE Plasma desktop out of the box and it comes with a nice suite of software. Basically, if you want Debian with an easy to use installer, they use the Calamaris installer. Uh, with the KDE Plasma desktop, Netrunner may be the distribution that you want to install. Now, I'm not going to run through the installation process on camera today because Netrunner, they use the Calamaris installer. If you've seen the Calamaris installer before, you know what it is. They don't customize it really in any way. It's you choose your keyboard layout, you create a username and a password, and as far as uh, installation, they default to using the extend for file system and they default to using a swap. Other than that, you know, you hit OK three or four times and you're done with the installation in about 10 minutes. This version of Netrunner is version 25 code named Shockworm. Now that's an interesting code name, Shockworm, because Debian 12, which is what it bases on, was called Bookworm, so a nice little code name for it. And this is Netrunner 25 running inside a virtual machine. I gotta say, first impressions as far as the aesthetics, I absolutely love that abstract art wallpaper. And this is, of course, custom built for this release because you can see N25, right? Netrunner 25, codename Shockworm, right? I, I love the artwork. I love the colors. Very cool wallpaper. It really fits the plasma theme that they've got here. Uh, what is the KDE plasma theme? This looks like it's the Breeze Dark theme here. Now, because it's based on Debian Stable, you're not going to get the latest and greatest software here. There's nothing bleeding edge about this. For example, this is running KDE Plasma version 5.27.5. I know Plasma is on the 6 series already, so you get an older version of Plasma here. You're going to get an older kernel. Um, we can actually check the version of the kernel. If I hit the super key or if I click on the little start menu button here, Instead of a traditional menu system, we actually get this KDE Plasma dashboard thingy. I believe that's what they call this, is the dashboard. Uh, if you don't like this, if you wanted the traditional menu back, you could actually edit the uh, panel here. You delete this widget and actually add the proper start menu, you know, your traditional start menu. But I'm fine using this dashboard here. Let me go ahead and do a search for terminal. And you can see we've got four different terminals installed. We have console with a K, which is your proper terminal you probably want to use. You have Yaquake here, which is a drop-down terminal. And you also have Xterm and Uxterm installed as well. These are probably dependencies. Um, you know, Xterm, for example, is often a dependency. It's, it gets pulled down anytime you install XOR on a system by default. So it's probably something maybe uh, that, you know, if I was uh, building this distro myself, I know Xterm sometimes gets pulled in. I probably would go back and remove it later before I release the ISO. I doubt most people are going to want to use Xterm, but I'm going to use console with a K, right? And let me zoom in here. Let's do a uname dash R. Let's check the kernel version. This is kernel 6.1.0, so an older kernel. Also, because this is a older uh, release of Plasma, are they using... Wayland? Are they using X11? I actually don't know. It didn't tell me when I logged in through the login manager, or maybe I just didn't look for it hard enough. But let me do a echo xdg underscore session underscore type. And X11 is what they're using for the display server. If we were running under Wayland, then it would have returned Wayland instead of X11. I'm also not sure if they install Pipewire on this distribution or not. Let's do a where is Pipewire. And Pipewire is not installed because you can see it doesn't list anything. Uh, if Pipewire was installed, it would give me the location to the Pipewire binary. So Pipewire is not here. How about Flatpak? Let's do some package management stuff. Flatpak is installed. Let's see if any flat packs are installed out of the box. They are not. Let's do a where is snap. Uh, snap is not installed. Snap D, yeah, not installed. I do know looking through the menu system earlier, it did have some app image stuff uh, installed out of the box. Now, not app images themselves, but like app image helping programs. So let me exit out of the terminal. Let's take a look at some of what is installed out of the box. I'm just going to go through the categories here. Let's go to games first. Now, games is interesting. They have a lot of games here, and some of these I really love. These are some classic games. I've played most of these. Uh, some of the really cool ones, Frozen Bubble, 
is just a fantastic game, uh, you know, kind of old school, you know, easy to play kind of games where you throw bubbles, uh, almost like Tetris. <laughs> it's like you, you have a little gun that shoots a bubble. I, I can't play it inside the VM. I, at least I don't think it will. Let me actually try to load it. And I haven't played this thing in a long time. Let's see if it'll actually capture the mouse properly in this window. I don't think it will. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can play that. But yeah, you get the idea of what the game is about. Also under games, you had GLTron. So that's like a, a, a motorcycle racing game where you snake around and you just have to make sure that you don't eventually come back on the uh, trail that you're leaving behind you. Really cool game. Of course, you have classics like chess and Mahjong and Mines. You also have the install Steam program. So that's the, uh, the installer to install Steam if you want it. We have a graphics category here. Under graphics, we have uh, GIMP, WinView, Inkscape, and Krita. Let's see what version of Krita we're on here. Krita is a really cool uh, art creation kind of program. So where something like GIMP is a lot of times used for manipulating like existing uh artwork, you know, photographs and things. If you're an artist that's actually wanting to create something on the fly, you might like a program like Krita a little better. This is Krita 5.1.5. And we have a internet category here. Firefox is our browser. Let's go ahead and check, see what version of Firefox we're on. It's Firefox ESR, but I don't know how old of a version this Firefox is. Let's go to about. This is Firefox 128.7.0 ESR. Close that out. Some other things we had under the internet category, we had uh, Thunderbird, which is the email client. We had Transmission, which is your BitTorrent client, and this is Transmission Qt. So Transmission typically is installed as a GTK program. This version of Transmission is a Qt application. Now that way it integrates better with the KDE Plasma desktop. Under the multimedia category, we have Audacious for our audio player. We have Cheese, which is a webcam program, Handbrake, which is used to uh, convert or transcode audio files. We have Kden Live, which is a video editor. That's interesting. You don't see a lot of Linux distributions install a video editor out of the box. Of course, not a lot of distributions install a program like Handbrake either. So there's some content creation stuff uh, built into this. So this is Kden Live out of the box. If I go to about Kden Live, this is Kden Live version 22.12.3. And let's go ahead and close that out. Now, one thing about Kden Live, if you need a more up-to-date version of Kden Live, Kden Live, there is a app image and it's a, an official app image from the creators of Kden Live. They maintain an app image build. So just go grab the app image. If you find the native version of Kden Live that's installed a little too old for you. We also have VLC for a media player. So we had Audacious, which is an audio player. You can also use VLC as an audio player, but VLC really, Probably what most people will use it for is playing video, uh, it plays, you know, standard video, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, pretty much any format you can throw at it. This is VLC version 3.0.21. Back to the menu system, let's go to the office category. We have the entire LibreOffice suite here. So we have Base, Calc, Draw, Impress, and Writer. Writer is the word processing program. Let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer. Let's dismiss these release announcement notes and go to Help and About LibreOffice. This is LibreOffice version 7.4.7.2. LibreOffice, one of the best pieces of free and open source software as far as a complete suite. It kind of is our free and open source alternative to like the Microsoft Office suite. So Writer is your word processor. Impress is your presentation program. Calc is your spreadsheet program. Let's go into settings and In settings. We have app image launcher. So the app image launcher is a way for if you go grab random app images off the internet, you know, this app image launcher, if you run them through it, it will automatically create the dot desktop files so that your app images will appear in a proper menu system. For example, this menu system here that we're looking at. Otherwise, your app images are not going to be known by the system and you're not going to see them in this menu system. So that's what the uh, app image launcher is for. You also have the grub 
customizer. That's to customize the grub screen when you first boot up the system. Not something I typically play with. Uh, KVantum Manager is for your theming as far as your uh, KDE Plasma themes. And then of course the system settings is your control center. This is your KDE control center where you can go and play with the appearance. For example, if you wanted to change the theme by default, they're using Breeze Dark. But if you wanted to change to the light theme, Breeze Light, you know, you could certainly do that for me. I prefer a dark theme, so I'm going to change that back. And it looks like when I changed it back, it did not set the wallpaper back. I may have to go and manually set the wallpaper. Actually, looks like the, the whole thing crashed. Wow. <laughs> now, this is probably not a uh, KDE bug or a Netrunner bug. That is probably specifically a bug because I'm running it inside a virtual machine. That's probably a graphics driver issue with the VM here. I'm using Vert Manager for the VM, by the way. Let's close out of the system settings and get back into the menu system. We also have a system category here where you, you've got the Discover Software Center. You've got Dolphin, which is the file manager. Uh, you got the KDE Partition Manager. This is something you, you really shouldn't play with. This is typically, you know, for before you install a Linux distribution, you might need a partition manager, but after installation, you usually don't want to leave that thing around on your system. Uh, we also have the Synaptic Package Manager. So let's first check out Discover and see if we can actually install anything through the Discover Software Center. So for example, I don't know if HTOP is already installed, but I'll just search for it. It's a small little program. Doesn't look like it is installed, so let's install it. Actually, that wasn't HTOP, that was NVTOP. Where is HTOP? Yeah, I, I, I guess it didn't appear. Yeah, I don't know what this is, why it didn't find the program that I was actually looking for. Yeah, kind of weird, but we have the update button here. I see that there are some updates if I click on that. So you can update with the Discover Software Center. That is weird though, HTOP. Like, where is, why is HTOP not? I know it's in the Debian repos. No, that's kind of weird. We have launch HTOP, which is, it looks like that's a, some kind of plasma widget. What about Vim? Is Vim here? GVim, there's Vim. Now Vim is already installed because instead of install, we have the remove button. Yeah, that is weird. Let me open the terminal again. So uh, let me go ahead and launch console. And let's see if HTOP is installed. It is not. Now, I know it's in the repos because I can do a sudo apt install htop yeah, it's, and it installs it. I'm just wondering why the Discover Software Center couldn't actually find htop for me. Uh, now, while I have htop open, checking system resource usage, I gave this VM four gigs of RAM. It's using about one gig of that RAM. It's kind of on the high end for Plasma, but the reason it's on the high end is I've got some stuff open down here. There's some programs that are running, including the update manager, that really, uh, that's Discover that's you know telling me we've got updates. That can often suck up a lot of RAM because it's checking for an update. Uh, the BitTorrent client I think I opened earlier is also still down here. Yaquake, which is the terminal, uh, the dropdown terminal. Uh, now, typically you would activate that by using F12. Now my keyboard is a mechanical keyboard and I'm kind of light on keys. I don't actually have anything mapped to the F12 key, so I can't do this with the keyboard without actually changing that key binding. But even without the key binding, it does have the little sys tray icon. You can just always click on it to get it to pop up. Click the X to get it to go away. Now, as far as software centers, while you certainly could use Discover, I probably would use Synaptic. So let me give it my sudo password. Synaptic is a standard package manager for Debian and Debian-based distributions. Uh, Ubuntu, for many years, has installed Synaptic out of the box. I don't know if they still do to this day, but pretty much any Debian-based distribution, if you want a really good graphical software center, Synaptic Package Manager. You can go in here and search for a program, which I've already installed HTOP, but if I search for it, you know, I can run a search for it, and if it's available, that is weird. <laughs> That's the second different software center where I type HTOP and it can't find it. So we'll type Vim, but there's Vim. You know, I could mark that for installation, and it's gonna install Vim-Runtime, and then I hit apply, and it's going to give me, you know, all the uh, dependencies. Just hit apply. It's going to install Vim for me. That's very weird. 
Because we know HTOP was in the repos, but with both Discover and the Synaptic Package Manager, neither one of them could find it when I did a search. And let me go ahead and close out of the Synaptic Package Manager. One last thing I want to take a look at, I want to right click on the desktop and let's go to configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's see what wallpapers are installed out of the box. It doesn't look like much is here. So we have the Netrunner, the official Netrunner branded wallpaper, which honestly is awesome. I wouldn't want to change it. You also have mountain and you've got a light colored version of this mountain and you have a dark colored version of this mountain. I think these are uh, standard plasma wallpapers. I'm probably for this particular release of plasma 5.27.5 and depending on whether you're using uh, breeze light or breeze dark depends on whether you get the light or the dark version of this mountain. So not a lot of wallpapers here but I probably just stick with the default anyway. Let me go ahead and apply this. That. So there you have it, a very quick and cursory look at the recent release of Netrunner. This is Netrunner version 25, code name Shockworm. Just a little bit of time I spent with it. It looks like a rather well put together and professional desktop Linux distribution. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, Armor Dragon, Cap, Caveman, Darloff, Daedalus, George, Lee, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace, Arshan, Vador, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons. Over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Netrunner would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Netrunner, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.